this just in breaking news our top story tonight the poker brat is back at it again winning a poker tournament at the u.s poker open we actually have some exclusive footage of the victory let's go ahead and roll the clip i think i'm gonna tip the staff very well next up sean deeb accepts body fat bet with bill perkins to go to 17 percent body fat over 14 months exactly how will this play out i guess we're going to have to wait also tonight an exciting update in the airball burks challenge essentially there is an argument about whether friends are allowed to watch or not i have a lot of things to do i don't give a shit about heads up poker mm. exciting stuff there burks i can't wait to see how that plays out later in the show and finally tonight nick vertucci with a suspicious fold on the hustler live stream just how did he know to get away they don't call him nit vertucci for nothing all of this and more tonight on poker news before we kick things into gear here, I want to let you guys know I'm playing another heads up $100,000 buy-in match today starting at 1 p.m. Central Time. In fact, it's probably up as you see this video. I'll put a link in the description below. You can head on over to the lodge and check it out. I won a pretty big pot yesterday right in the stream. It's actually the last hand of the stream. If you don't want to watch that, I'll put a link in there too. But definitely check out this content. Some great stuff. I'm excited about our matches we got going. I'll see you over there. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start off with the Phil Helmy winning a poker tournament story. I think if you watched my channel for some time, you probably know how I feel about stories where somebody wins a tournament. They're really important. It reminds me of some other tournament victories we saw, like this guy winning, or that guy, or this guy, or that guy. Like lots of really important, great stories, and I think it's it's just definitely it's definitely newsworthy when these kinds of things happen and somebody wins 22 buy-ins in a tournament. I do kid Phil Helmuth, though, of course, when big names win tournaments, great for the game. And I do want to wish my congrats over to Phil on the victory. I know he's had some losses lately that didn't exactly go so great. I think I'm going to burn this fucking place down. I did have a chance the other day to talk with Phil off the record, and uh, we, we kind of hashed things out a little bit. I feel like we're probably in a bit of a better place now. Uh, I know in the past I have definitely grilled Phil Helmuth for being unreasonable, but, you know, we I, I see his side on some things, too, and I'm hoping moving forward... We can have a good relationship together. But I do have to say, too, if he does ridiculous stuff, we're covering the news here, guys. It's something we're simply going to have to do. I'm sure you guys are really sad about that. Moving on, let's talk about the upcoming 200-400 heads-up match between Airball and Burks. Now, here's the thing about this match. It's getting a little bit pathetic. There's some back and forth. We're getting into territory like, can my friend be there to watch? Or what days of the week are we going to play? And there's, there are a few big points that I want to make here. I, I'm not going to rehash the back and forth. The, the cliff notes are there was essentially an argument about if a friend could be at the table or not. And that has escalated to using Phil Galfond as the arbitrator to decide what should occur. When I first saw this, my initial reaction was that Airball's friend should be allowed to be at the table because they do travel around together. They both came to the lodge together. And I don't think that it's in a, in a context of him trying to coach him. But the more I thought about it, the more I think that he actually should not be allowed at the table. And I'm actually going to side with Burks on this one. But there's a reason why I think I initially felt that way. And the reason is that Burks is completely changing this story and this game to be something that it really wasn't. Let's go ahead and roll the initial clip on what he said. Play me heads up at 200, 400. Like, fucking fine, man. Mm -hmm. We'll set up a time to meet at Bellagio every day. And I'll roll out of bed after I do all my shit, get all my priorities out of the way. We can meet at four o'clock every day at Bellagio or Aria or Wynn or somewhere that's not inconvenient to me. And we can play for a month straight. So, so, so much to jump into here. But let's start off with this. Whenever you post text messages of someone or direct messages with someone, except for extreme, extreme situations, in my book, that's kind of an unwritten rule you never do. I mean, think about my life, all the beefs I've had, all the different de text messages I've had. How many have I really ever shown ever? And the answer I believe is none. I don't want to say it's none because it's been a lot of years, but basically it has to be super, super, super far over the line. And Burks just threw him out there immediately. Even in the height of the me and Daniel Negreanu argument fight over the years, we were talking online DMs and it got heated. And not one text message leaked. And that's something that we can agree on. We, in fact, talked about this just the other day. Where I said, no matter how heated our conversations got, you just don't do that. And he said, exactly. I just don't do that. When someone else does, they go directly on my show. See, this is exact proof. You never show DMs or text messages, guys. Period. Oh, wait, shit. Yeah, it's actually kind of a rever like a reverse rule for you. Besides mm -hmm. the call it monetary aspect if you win. Because if you lose, you get dunked on by Airball Nick. And if you win, of course you're going to win because you're playing Airball right. Nick. Right, of course. Landon calling this a reverse free roll is just... Is just it, 
man, Landon, buddy, I know you lost your bet to Bill Perkins, okay? But when you play someone heads up for a lot of money, it's not a reverse free roll. I mean, Berkey, your expected value here is $400,000. This is a reverse free roll for you because you might lose. That's not how money works. But let's hone in on what Burke said specifically about playing 200-400. Play me heads up at 200-400? Fine, man. We can meet at 4 o'clock every day at Bellagio or Aria or Wynn or somewhere that's not inconvenient to me. And we can play for a month straight. If he comes to Vegas, we'll play for a month straight. That's a direct quote. And now it's turned into three days a week. What, what happened here, right? And I'll tell you what happened here. Burks thought if I call him out in this way and make it inconvenient for him, he won't do it. And in fact, he says so. You think he's booking his flight right now? No, of course <laughs> not. Because it's fucking inconvenient yeah. to him. Right. It's like this guy acts like he has nothing but time on his hands. I thought you were an investment banker. I've never seen an investment banker who spends 100 hours a week <laughs> at a fucking casino. <laughs> Gotta give it to Burks. This investment banker does have a lot of time on his hands. If you're going to challenge people, here's the thing. You got to be ready to back it up. Okay, if you're not going to, then it's just bullshit at that point. And that's something I think the viewers all hate. Do you guys like when people call out challenges and, and aren't willing to do it? I know you guys at some point are like, we don't care anymore. This is just drama. But at least if there's poker to be played, if it's accepted, it's a different story. We can meet at four o'clock every day at Bellagio. It's a lot of fucking hoops and I have a lot of things to do. And we can play for a month straight. This is not a priority to me. I can't make time for it. <laughs> Enough with the goddamn lies. Why does everybody lie? Somehow this has gone from we're going to play a month straight to what days are flexible and reasonable for me that I want to play, even though it's in my hometown, in my home city, my home, whatever. And I guess this is really why I feel kind of on Airball side, despite the fact I don't think people should be at the table. The reason is that Airball is caving here to make sure he gets to play Berkey, right? He's caving to make that happen. But still, Burks doesn't want to play. Why is that? You're the minus 165 favorite at high stakes, heads up, no limit. Why would you do that? I don't understand. Also, if you're going to say, why all the lies, why all the lies? Hey, how about backing up what you want? Because I'm pretty goddamn sure Airball will play you every day for a month. As for Airball, dude, just leave your friend at home. Is it that hard? Just let him let him hang out in uh, the Bellagio. He can play a little poker with some other people while you guys battle out. Whatever it is. I Just make the... Don't, let's not let this not happen because people want a friend there. It does seem like it's going to go on anyway as scheduled. But this just seems uh, like it's getting into a different place than we initially wanted it to be and then this last part of the story this is going to hurt guys and uh please cover your ears because i just want to have a one-on-one -on -one with phil galfond phil you're a really nice guy everyone knows that everyone likes you but i think you're a shitty arbitrator in fact i think back about my challenge with negranu when i started limping the button and negranu was tanking to basically learn more charts in the later days you said that was okay if i limped that was fucking wrong the problem is, you want to be everyone's best friend. And everyone likes you. You're loved in the poker community. And you're super upstanding. If I needed someone to hold a lot of money for me, you'd be in my top five easily. But the thing is, when you're an arbitrator, it's not about being people's best friend. It's about doing the right thing, regardless of who may or may not like you, even if it makes you seem like you're being an asshole. That's why I really don't think you should be arbitrators for prop bets, despite having maybe the best reputation in the entire community. Going into this Telegram chat that was posted about what your ruling was, where it says, all right, gentlemen, I've made my first of two decisions. Given where we are in the negotiations, which is past the point of initial agreement, but still early, and that we've never agreed, but for Bert, you have a choice. A, back out, or B, agree or abide by whatever my ruling is. Dude, the whole point they chose you as the arbitrator was so that you make a ruling. When you're an arbitrator, you don't have to say, now guys, my first rule as arbitrator is, do you want my ruling on arbitration or would you rather not? What the hell are we doing? And finally, even though this is stone dead to ever happen, I want to throw out $100,000 for free to the winner of the Berkey Airball Challenge if they play it on stream at the Lodge. That will never happen though because it's free money, so it's a reverse free roll or something. I'm not entirely sure, but that won't happen because Ber 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 Berkey just has too much of an edge. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll be following for it. Let's go ahead and move on. Our next story, Sean Deeb agrees to a $100,000 bet to win 1 million versus Bill Perkins. Deeb currently weighs about 310 pounds. He's going to have to get down to 17% body fat at my lowest. I was probably about 15. I imagine I'm about 17% body fat right now. So you're looking at pretty much what Deeb has to get to. This is it. This is the dream.
if you're Sean Deeb. It's all right. We're going to have a talk with Sean. He's going to hop on here at some point, and we're going to discuss the terms and uh, how he feels about it, what his strategy will be, all that kind of stuff. But before we do, I want to ask you at home, what do you want us to ask Sean Deeb about this bet? It's going to be pretty straightforward. Are you going to diet exercise or not? And if he is, eh, maybe he can win. What do you think? You think Deep can win this? What do you guys think? Let me know in the description below. And finally tonight, let's talk about this crazy hero faulty on The Hustler, where Nick Vertucci let go with the nut straight and the nut flush blocker against an incredibly strong hand. It's one of the craziest folds I can remember seeing. I know there's been a lot of allegations about The Hustler and the security of their games. Let's take a look at the fold. No need to jam. Fold. Fold. Wait. What? Mm. Nice hand. Thank you. Oh, no. Crazy. He managed to fold that hand, a hand that strong with a redraw to the nuts. He managed to just let it go over that small size because he knew he was behind. This seems a little disturbing to me, frankly. I'm a little worried about what's going on over there. How can one of the owners make that fold correctly versus another player? How can you let that go? There's only one other thing to talk about here, though, which is the guy actually had pocket threes with no club and was completely stone dead. So this seems like it's on the up and up to me personally. It's going to be it for me today for Poker News. If you guys want to watch me play Heads Up No Limit, I'm playing right now over on Poker at the Lodge. $100,000 heads up buy-in versus Scott Ball. I'll see you guys there. Otherwise, you have a great day. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you again soon.